Hi everybody, welcome back to YouTube. I'm Doug Miles. This next interview I'm presenting today is one with one of the great radio personalities in the business, Dick Heatherton. If you've lived in New York or LA, I know you've heard his voice many, many times, but he's been a very popular voice around the country on voiceovers and commercials for many, many years. And now he's branched out into a very successful career as a motivational speaker. On a side note, I had a chance to work with Dick Heatherton's dad, Ray Heatherton, up in New York when I started doing radio back in college at Adelphi University. He hosted a weekly radio program called The Breakfast Club. And those of you who remember Ray Heatherton also, back in the television days in the 50s and 60s as the Merry Mailman. And of course his daughter, Dick's sister, a wonderful entertainer, Joey Heatherton. But this interview is featured with Dick Heatherton, great radio personality. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more of my interviews here on YouTube. Welcome back to the program. Great pleasure right now. Always fun to talk to other people uh, that are uh, do doing this for the li for a living and uh, really one of the great names in broadcasting. Great showbiz families, actually, is our next guest. He's a broadcaster, author, actor, and a motivational speaker, really a multi-talented man. Uh, Dick Heatherton joining us right now by telephone. How are you, Dick? Hey, Doug. Thanks very much. Uh, glad to be with you on Sunday 1220. Good to, uh, good to finally get a chance to kind of reunite with you a little bit, uh, just talking to you off the air. We worked a long time ago, just to give the audience a little background. Of course, uh, Dick's dad was uh, the great Ray Heatherton, uh, Broadway star and broadcaster for many years up in New York, did uh, The Merry Mailman, and he did a radio show while I was in college radio at Adelphi, and then you filled in at one time for on one of the shows, so I had a chance to meet you briefly then, but that was many, many years ago. We won't say how long. Many, many years ago, sure. <laughs> we didn't have gray hair, but that's another story. That's right. <laughs> well, you've kind of branched out uh, into doing something that I think is, is really fascinating, just checking your website, motivational speaking and, and, and corporate speaking, kind of uh, to uh, help people in the corporate world be more successful. I think that's an interesting uh, field you've gone into. Well, thank you, uh, Doug. Uh, I got into it because... I, I found uh, after I uh, got off the air in broadcasting and I was, got into sales and sales management that so many people, they needed help in expressing what they wanted to do. Now, they knew in their head what they wanted to do, but they didn't know how to really, I mean, they maybe even sometimes be able to put it down in paper, but they couldn't express it. So what I did is all of a sudden I found that uh, many of my clients were asking me to be their spokesperson. So I would go on out, and what I, what I do is I would represent my client and speak to their clients. And uh, the next thing I knew, uh, one thing led to another, and so I've been uh, doing an awful lot of speaking, especially out here on the West Coast. And, hey, who knows, maybe even uh, pretty soon in the sarasota Bradenton area. And my, my topic basically is success strategies for 21st century change. Yeah, we do a lot of segments on the program. We get a lot of uh, authors of business books or, or sales uh, strategy books, and I, th I think it's always interesting to to talk about that because uh, you know people tend to forget that you go into a store or a company, and you know you're you're dealing with customers. You got to be able to sell each one on not only your product but uh, but your business and you yourself. And and if you don't have that down, you're not going to make any money. Doug, you're right. You know, especially about selling yourself and just getting it away from the retail area. We all want change in our life, and you know we see the need for it all around us. However, when we get really get right down to it, we're scared of change. You know, no matter how bad our current situation is, just know that what we know, what we're experiencing, is infinitely more familiar and less fearful to most of us than what we really want, which is something we're unfamiliar with, and in many times we feel unworthy of receiving. You've been through the wars, like we talked about before, working in, working in the broadcast field. So you, you've dealt with salespeople and, and different kind of management. So I guess that all kind of helped you when you decided to, uh, to do this motivational speaking, right? Oh, very, very much so. You know, and one, of the, one of the problems and the reason for my success strategies for the 21st century change is that many of us are afraid of what we want. In many ways, it's our own. You remember the Stockholm Syndrome? Yeah. In many ways, it's our own Stockholm Syndrome. It's like a self-perpetuating prison that we keep ourselves in. You know, I remember, uh, Doug, uh, oh, maybe about a year or two ago, uh, interviewing Dr. Joe Vitale. You may, may uh, know him from the movie The Secret. Right. As well as, you know, a lot of other books that he's published. And I remember asking him about a quote that uh, I had heard, which was, people respect wisdom, but only respond to pain. And when I asked him about it, he said, you know, that's only half right. He said, people respect wisdom, respond to pain as well as passion. 
And that's the, the part that people forget. You've got to have a passion, you know, for what you really want. In fact, there was a study recently at the University of uh, San Francisco, and it all had to do with people who had gone through coronary bypass. And they found that after two years, those coronary bypass patients had gone back to doing everything they did two years prior, meaning their diet stunk, they didn't exercise, they were drinking, they did everything wrong. And you'd think, well, wait a minute, you know, come on, this is a new lease on life, what are you doing? So what happened is they found that when you, when you tell somebody, now, if you, if you drink and if you smoke and if you, and if you don't exercise, you're going to die. Hmm. Well, guess what? You know, at first you say, yeah, hey, please, I want to live. But after a while, it's like, well, what am I doing? I mean, if this is all there is, what good does it do? Hey, I might as well go back and, you know, have my pizza, you know, have a, have a pastrami sandwich, you know, do whatever I want. However, they found that as soon as you portrayed your recovery in a sense that, here's an idea, why don't you try this? How would you like to be able to really live your life, enjoy your life, you know, have a wonderful relationship with your wife, uh, romantically as well. You know, enjoy your friends, travel, do things. And the best way to do this is by eating this, you know, and doing that. By emphasizing the positive, people were able to affect that change and stick with it. That's what part of the change is all about. And that's what I try to talk about, you know, the success strategies for 21st century change. You know, so much of what, we, what we're all about is, is fear. In fact, it seems that fear is the faith that something won't work out. You know, and the one right. thing we need to do is find out, you know, how do you feel? What do you want? Now, this is not, you know, some big California, oh, wow, it's how you feel. Yeah, but wait a minute, it is part of, you know, how you feel. You know, so often we are just so, uh, hey, I hope you don't mind. I'm <laughs> no, no, this is I'm just good going stuff. On. Uh, you know, because I really believe this, and I've experienced this myself. You know, if we're not doing what we should be doing, it takes its toll inside. We may, we, we may not think so. Let's just put it this way. Uh, for many years, I was in sales and sales management. Every once in a while, I'd be doing some commercials or TV commercials, as well as maybe general or hospital. But the one thing I really wanted to do was be a speaker. I mean, I've been doing it all, all along for clients. Well, why not for myself? But, oh, God, well, I'm in fear. I can't really do it. Well, next thing I know, uh, all of a sudden I have a growth on my throat. I said, what is this? So I went to the doctor and said, this does not look good. So I had an operation. This is about maybe four or five years ago. Thank God it wasn't cancer. Everything's good. I said, so I just you know, kept on doing what I was doing. I was doing my sales, sales management, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I wasn't doing the speaking. Hmm. About a year later, all of a sudden, I'm in the meeting with Laura Ingram, who's a syndicated uh, uh, radio sure. uh, host, a talk host, as well as an author, and all of a sudden I said, excuse me, and I got up, I was in such pain. Oh, I just about made it to the doctor. The doctor took uh, one look at me and he said, you are in the hospital. Next thing I know, I've got a kidney stone. So I have a kidney stone operation. And uh, then I go in for a checkup about six months later and uh, having a prostate exam. I said, oh, well, it feels a little funny. You need a little more, um, I, we, we gotta check this a little bit further. So um, did a little more, you know, checking out. And it was the day before Thanksgiving. This is uh, about maybe three years ago. And I was with my wife, who's originally from St. Louis. And we were visiting her brothers and sisters and their family. And it was the day before Thanksgiving, and I get a phone call from the doctor. And this is all I remember. And this, these were not the exact words, but, you know, getting to the point, it was, uh, Mr. Heatherton, uh, happy Thanksgiving. By the way, you've got cancer. Oh, boy. I have prostate cancer. You have a, a, a series of things like this happening to you, you start realizing you're not doing what you're doing, you've been internalizing, well, I can't do it, I'm not worthy of it, whatever whatever it is. And I said, this is nonsense, I've gotta be doing what I'm doing. And sure enough, I made the adjustments in my life, and that's when all of a sudden my, my speaking career really started taking off, because I wasn't just talking about something that I read in a book, but these are my own experiences.